Now, a new book about hip-hop music in Africa. Hip-hop in Africa, Prophets of the City and Dusty Foot Philosophers is by Tanzania-born, U.S.-raised Msia Kibona Clark, a professor at Howard University in Washington, D.C. Journalist Leslie Goff caught up with Professor Kibona Clark while she was in New York on a book tour. Women in hip-hop in Africa, just like women in hip-hop everywhere, are often fighting sexism in the industry, coming from producers, radio DJs that, you know, oftentimes ask for sexual favors or withhold beats in music from female artists unless they perform certain sexual favors. So, really? Really? Yeah. And one of the things that's been interesting is seeing the women who have, you know, really rejected that. And entered the culture on their own terms. And who, um, who are among your very favorites? In Ghana, there's Abina Rockstar, who is this really physically tiny artist, but has this really strong and powerful voice. Why can't I be just a rapper, but I have to be a female rapper? If you make the mistake of calling me a female rapper, I will correct you nicely. The tag female rapper is one of the biggest reason why we are not getting recognition down here in Ghana. You know, rap or talent has no gender. A B E N A. Yeah, rock star. Lego. Abina, 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 well, I went to Tanzania on a study abroad in 1996 for a year and just kind of immersed myself in the hip-hop scene there. So artists like the guys from Kwanzaa Unit, I met them in 96. And so it was through hanging out with them, going to hip-hop nights at the Kilimanjaro Hotel is when I began to fall in love with hip-hop on the continent. Through people rapping in Swahili, in Ghana, the same thing, artists rapping in Tree about their local experiences and so rapping about being on the streets of Brooklyn doesn't <laughs> ring true if you when you're on the streets of Dar es Salaam exactly and what was your big song from back then <laughs> <laughs> well actually Safiri which basically means traveler was one of my favorite songs <laughs> How do you answer those who say, look, what is hip-hop doing in the ivory tower of the university? Does it legitimately belong there? Is it worthy of this level of study? How do you answer those people? Uh, a lot of the more traditional African studies scholars have been resistant to hip-hop as even considering it real music. But one of the things that really actually helped African hip-hop studies was Yenamar. So Yenamar is the Enough is Enough movement in Senegal where they mobilized hundreds of thousands of youth to vote, voted out of office, President Abdullah Wad took to the streets, protested. And this was a movement that was led by the hip-hop generation, hip-hop artists at the forefront of it, a great example of hip-hop culture being directly linked to political change. <laughs> Through that, African studies could no longer say hip-hop was irrele irrelevant. Can you envision a time where African hip-hop overtakes African-American form of hip-hop? Well, Chuck D has really praised hip-hop on the continent. Chuck D is uh, one of the founding members of the group Public Enemy, and he said right now Africa is where hip-hop hip is. Interesting. And so he praised what's going on in Africa where you have some of the strongest hip-hop in the world. Professor Msia Kibona Clark of Howard University and author of Hip-Hop in Africa, Prophets of the City and Dusty Food Philosophers.